In these problems, we're going to take our first step toward factoring by finding the greatest common factor of each one of these numbers and then pulling it out front and uh, making it look like the distributed property. So it's kind of backwards distributed property what we're going to do. Uh, again, like I said, is our first step toward factoring. So the 36 and 8, we're going to find the greatest common factor. And uh, I see I can pull 4 out of both of those numbers. And when I do, 36 divided by 4 is 9. 8 divided by 4 is 2. So we have 9 and 2. So 4 is my GCF. So I'm going to write that out front here. So I'm going to make it look at the distributed property. Like 4 is out front. So what numbers go in here? Well, my 36 divided by 4 was my 9 that I had right here. Plus my 8 divided by 4, which is my 2, which I had here. So we're going to rewrite these addition problems by finding the greatest common factor of the two add-ins. We're going to pull it out front, and then we're going to divide it out of each one of these terms. So again, backwards distributed property. This is the first look at factoring, which is going to come back and be a, a big part of algebra. In the next example, I have 22 plus 55. So I'm going to go ahead and put these numbers side by side and find the greatest common factor. It looks like 11 will divide nicely out of both of those numbers. So 22 divided by 11 is 2. 55 divided by 11 is 5. And 2 and 5 don't have any common factors, so I'm done. So we're going to say the greatest common factor is 11. So that 11 is going to come out front here. And my leftovers, 2 and 5, will go in these parentheses. Again, the idea of these problems is we're factoring Finding the greatest common fact, we're factoring that out, and we're putting the leftovers in here as an addition problem. So ultimately, it looks like the distributed property. In the last example, I have 28 plus 70. So I want to find the greatest common factor of 28 and 70. And I want to pull that out and make it look like the distributed property. So they're both actually divisible by 7. So let's pull a 7 out. So I have 4 and 10. Then it looks like they're both divisible by 2, so I have 2 and 5. And then 2 and 5 don't have any common factors. So my 7 and my 2 are my greatest common factors. So I'm going to say 7 times 2 equals 14. So that 14 is going to go out front as the greatest common factor. And 28 divided by 14 was that 2 that we had. So 2 plus 70 divided by 14 is that 5 that we had, so plus 5. So I have factored this addition problem by taking the greatest common factor out, and I'm left with 2 plus 5 in the inside. So 14 times the quantity, 2 plus 5, and that looks like my distributed property. So these problems are very much focused on finding the greatest common factor of these two numbers, which later on in algebra will be two terms, and then you're going to pull it out and factor using the greatest common factor.